Okay, so today we're going to talk about conversions, it's a system or uh, idea that a lot of people have a lot of trouble with, especially in introductory chemistry. And remember, the concept is we're just trying to take a value and turn it into something that looks different, but it is actually the same value. A great example is I take two quarters, worth 50 cents. I take five dimes, worth 50 cents. The form has changed. I've got two quarters versus I've got five dimes, but the value of it hasn't changed. Just like if I talk about a thousand meters is a kilometer. Well, it's the same thing. The form has changed. One, I'm talking about meters. One, I'm talking about kilometers. But my actual value hasn't changed. And that's what we're doing in conversions. And as we saw before, I like a very specific way of setting up my conversions. So what I like to do is, let's say we wanted to do that. Let's say we wanted to convert 1,000 meters. And somebody asked us to convert that into kilometers. How would we go about doing that? Well, what I like to do is I always like to take my starting information. So my starting information here is the 1,000 meters. And I copy it down here on the left. And then I say, well, what am I looking for? Here, I'm looking for kilometers. So I'm going to put that way over here on the right. And the reason is, is I know there's some sort of conversion factor that's going to get me from meters to kilometers. Now, we'll see as we go along that it might be one conversion factor, or two, or three, or four. But there's some conversion factor, so I'm going to leave room for it. And I'm just going to guess at first that it's one conversion factor. So I'm going to draw a set of parentheses there and a divider saying, hey, I think there's one conversion factor that's going to get me from meters to kilometers, and I'm going to try it out and see what it is. Now, what do I put in that conversion factor? It's really, really, really tempting to put numbers in there first. Be like, the numbers, i got to get the numbers. i got to calculate the numbers. That's what they're going to test me on. But I actually think it's much more important to get the units right, because if you get the units right, the numbers work themselves out. And so make sure to get the units right first, and then type in numbers next. And so what do I have to do? Well, I'm trying to get rid of meters. I don't want meters anymore. I want kilometers. And since I've got meters over here in my numerator, if I want to cancel out something in the numerator and I'm multiplying, i got to put those meters down here in the denominator so that when I multiply them, they cancel out. Okay, so well, if I've got meters in the denominator and they're canceling out those initial ones, what am I trying to get to? I'm trying to get to kilometers, so well, my conversion factor better have kilometers in it somewhere. And so I'm going to put a km up there for kilometers. So oftentimes that's what happens. Whatever you're looking for, at least in a single step conversion, goes on the top here. And whatever you're trying to get rid of, or you're starting with, goes on the bottom there. Now, now that we've got the units in there, we have to think about what numbers. Well, if you remember, the definition of kilo is equal to 1,000. That's just a definition. Hopefully you've memorized that. And it works to any unit. So I can put a meter in there, and then a kilometer is 1,000 meters. Now, my handwriting's not that good, so I'm going to redo my k there and make sure that looks like a lowercase k. So that would be lowercase k for kilometers. So now I know what to put in there. In front of the meters, I've got the number 1,000 attached down there. And in front of kilometers, I have the number 1. There's an implicit 1 in there. 1 kilometer is 1,000 meters. And so now I can just multiply that out. Now, I know the answer to this one is just going to be 1 kilometer. And so that's a pretty easy one. But it's always nice to start with an easy one before we go on to more complicated ones. So there's 1 kilometer. So let's set up another conversion. We're going to, in this case, go from, let's say we've got 42.53 micrometers. And what I want to change that into is meters. I'm going to do the exact same thing I did last time. I'm going to take what I started with, 42.53 micrometers, write that on the left, what I'm looking for on the right, put a set of parentheses there so I know there's going to be a conversion factor. What do I put in there? On top, I put what I'm looking for, because I need to have meters on top. Because at the very end, I'm looking for meters to be on top. I've got to get rid of those micrometers by multiplying. So one needs to be on the top, and one needs to be on the bottom. And there we have it. So now i got to figure out what am I going to put in there. Well, I've got to remember, excuse me, I've got to remember that uh, what is the definition of micro? Micro is just defined as 10 to the minus 6. So a micrometer is a 10 to the minus 6 meters. So that will tell me what to put in there. I can put in that 1 micrometer is 10 to the minus 6 meters. Okay, And then if you type all that out in your calculator, you should get 
two, five, three times 10 to the minus fifth meters. And that's what we get in that case, multiplying it out. If you want to see me type that into my calculator, I'm going to try to do it here and see if you can actually see it. So I'm going to type the 42.53 first. So I've got my 42.53 in there, if I can get the glare just right. There we go. And then I'm going to multiply by 10 to the 6. Now, there's lots of different ways of typing 10 to the 6 in your calculator. My favorite way is to use my built-in scientific notation. On this calculator, it's the little e letter. And so what I actually type in is 42.53 times 1e6, which is 1 times 10 to the 6. And when I hit the Enter key, it tells me I've got this very, very large number. Now, of course, I did it wrong, right? What I want is 10 to the minus 6. Right? Always do it wrong when you're doing a video, huh? And so I get this. This is a very small number. And if you count all those zeros, you end up with 4.253 times 10 to the minus 5th. So sorry about that mistake on the first one, but you see what I put in my calculator. So that's what we do for single-step conversions. I'll make another video that talks about multi-step conversions.